Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Air Gradient Open Air, which is an outdoor air quality monitor. Now we have reviewed air quality monitors before, but these have been for indoor sensors. So the open air quality is particularly exciting for me in Australia, as we have some horrendous bushfires where our air quality is a real problem. So hopefully with this sensor, this will help me monitor and warn when the air quality is hazardous. Now I'll be reviewing the Build It Yourself kit and more specifically the latest O1 PST version. But if you have the older version, I'll put links in the description to the O1 PP build instructions. We'll also have a look at the Air Gradient 1, which is the indoor variant with the same sensors as the open air, but this time with a small display to give you those readings, but more importantly, has a large LEDs that give you a visualization of the air quality. This makes the device far more useful for that glance to warn you of the air quality without the need to read the display. And don't forget that all this is integrated into Home Assistant, so you get all those readings available to display, record and graph. Enough for any data nerd to have sleepless nights. So let's break out the masks and see how we can build this amazing little sensor. In the box, you get the Air Gradient Open Air Printed Circuit Board that contains the ESP32 C3 chipset, so you're running the latest and greatest, the Plant Tower PMS 5003T Particle Sensor, the Sense Air S8 module for CO2 levels, and the SGP41 module for the total volatile organic compounds. I'll put links in the description as to what these are and why they are important. Then to connect all these sensors to the ESP32, you have cross cables and a four meter long USB-C cable to power the unit. And all the electronics are inside a UV resistant enclosure made from ASA plastic to keep everything safe from the elements. Connecting everything together is super simple, although fiddly due to the size of the plugs and components. I won't go into the specifics, but it's well documented and there are instructional videos on the website that take you through the process. One word of advice, pick yourself up a Torx T6 screwdriver. Air Grodian do conveniently supply one, but it's super small and very fiddly. First off, and importantly for the majority of you that are watching this video, as of June 2024 release of Home Assistant, Air Gradient now has a local integration, so no more hacks integration is required, which is great news. Then there is the global community of Air Gradient owners. Similar to how EcoWit allows you to join into their global weather community to have your readings available to all, optionally you can do the same for Air Gradient to publish your readings for all to see. Now you can set this to share by address, suburb, city, or even by country. So you're not going to be sharing any personal information, just data at the granularity you wish. As the Open Air and Air One both run open source, you can view the readings for, for particulate matter, volatile organic compounds, NOx, temperature, and humidity from a dashboard viewed through a browser or from within Home Assistant or any other platform that can be integrated, or in the case of the Air One, on its small but clear display, or via the large LED lights for ease of viewing. Setup is super simple, as this is an ESP32 based device. Simply plug in your Air One or Open Air device. The setup will be the same as both are ESP32 devices. The device will publish an access point, on your phone, connect to this access point, which will be shown up as an air gradient followed by some letters and numbers. When prompted, enter the password clean air, all in lowercase. Now on some devices, this will automatically switch to the setup page for the device. However, on my mobile, it didn't. If this is the case for you, open Chrome. I found that Safari can be problematic due to the additional security measures it deploys. Navigate to 192.168.4 Point one. Select Configure Wi-Fi. Select your home Wi-Fi or type in your Wi-Fi SSID and enter the password. Press Save. And that's all you need to do on the mobile. To integrate with Home Assistant, make sure that you are running on a version later than June 2024. You can do this by navigating to Settings, About, your core should be after 2024.6, in my case, 2024.11. You should notice that a new notification has appeared. 
select notifications. Select check it out. You should see your egg radiant device has been displayed. Press add. Now press submit. Optionally give it an area and press finish. Your Air Gradient device has now been added and you can see it with the Air Gradient 1 device. Now let's have a look at the sensors that are available. Press the 1 device on the Air Gradient. You can see we have sensors for carbon dioxide, humidity, NOx index, PM.03, PM1, PM10, PM2.5, temperature and VOX index. I'll put links to explain all of these in the description if you are interested. And for all you data nerds, the NOx and VOC are displayed as indexes, but there are hidden raw values available that can be activated to report on and graph if needed. To display these, press the plus two entities not shown. Select raw NOx. Now press the cog icon, select enable. A warning message will appear. The enable entities will be added to Home Assistant in 30 seconds. Press OK. Now press Update. Now repeat the same for the VOC. And after 30 seconds, the raw NOx and the raw VOC values are now available. As you would expect from a device that uses the highest quality components, you do have some configuration options. Now I'm no air quality specialist, so I'll run through the configuration options quickly, but Air Gradient are true specialists in this area and have university studies and ongoing global readings with your assistance. First off, you can calibrate the CO2 sensor. You can baseline the CO2 sensor for 1, 8, 30, 90 and 180 days or not at all. You can configure the sources to be local or cloud. I'd recommend this as local. NOx index for learning offset can be set to 12, 60, 120, 360 or 720 hours. I'd recommend leaving this at the 12 hours default. You then get the option to post your data to Air Gradient, which I would highly recommend, but you've got the option regardless. And finally, similar to the NOx index offset, you can have a VOC index offset. In the diagnostics, you can see if the firmware is up to date. And in the hidden values for the carbon dioxide automatic baseline, NOx learning offset, signal strength and VOX index learning offset, now that's a lot of information in a short amount of time, but I'll put links in the description to articles on each of these measurements. When my air gradient was delivered, it came with version 3.1.5. If you have implemented your air gradient and it shows that the firmware needs to be upgraded, then this is the section for you. To upgrade to the latest version, navigate to the air gradient firmware update page. Link in the description. Make sure you are using a Chromium based browser. I'd suggest Chrome. Remember that Safari will not work. Navigate to the version of the firmware you wish to upgrade to. From 3.0.9, the firmware for the Air 1 and the Open Air is the same. So my suggestion would be the latest combined version, which at the time of writing this video is 3.1.9. Unplug your Air Gradient at the device. Now this process works for the Air Gradient 1 and the Open Air. Make sure that you're using a USB-C plug that can transfer data as well as power. Press and hold the reset button, which is the small recess button next to the USB socket. Now plug in the USB-C cable back into your air gradient device. Release the reset button. Your air gradient will now go into boot mode and can be upgraded. Press flash now next to the corresponding firmware version you wish to deploy. A pop-up will appear. Select your air gradient. This will usually be denoted by a USB and a JTAG. Press connect. A pop-up window will appear. Select install Air Gradient 1 open air version. Now, since we are just upgrading the firmware, we can simply press next. If you select a raised device, then you will need to repair it again. A confirmation screen will show you the version and ask for installation confirmation. Press install. The install is super quick. Once completed, press next and close out of the window. And your Air 1 device has been upgraded. For performance, I don't have any professional lab equipment to baseline as a measurement. So instead, what I will do is show you a comparison between an out of the box readings for an Air 1 and open air from Air Gradient and the Air 1 from Apollo Automation. At the bottom of the screen, I'll also throw in a SwitchBot Meter Pro with CO2 for comparison. 
Although these use similar technology and sensors, there are some distinct differences. And the old expression of you get what you pay for really comes into its own here. The air gradients are both more expensive than the air one from Apollo Automation. But both the air gradients come with certificates for CE, FCC, ROHS, REACH, REST Air, and their accuracy articles reading like data sheets from laboratory devices as opposed to a home sensor. This is not to say that the Apollo Air 1 is not accurate. But remember that this is half the price of the air gradient devices. Let me know in the comments what you think of the values and why they are similar and some are far apart. So the air gradient, air quality monitor. The Air One indoor sensor with its display and LED warning lights. And the open air outdoor sensor. What do I think? Well, as I mentioned in the performance section, these really are the next level of sensors. Above the home user and bring out the white coat accuracy into your home. And then to allow you to share this to the world to help bring attention to the importance of air quality. Display this on an on-screen device and visual LED representation, online dashboard or in Home Assistant. Are they overkill for accuracy in the home? Yes, in my opinion. However, since when are you going to get in trouble for too accurate as opposed to not accurate enough? These sensors are not so much a sensor for your home air quality as much as a global experiment into air quality and using the smart home enthusiasts to achieve this. And I love this idea. Well done, Air Gradient. So should you consider them, skip them, or buy them? Well, if you can move past the eye-watering high price and get your partner approval, it's a definite buy it. I just wish they threw in a free lab coat and some glasses. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then hit that like button, comment, and share. And if you want access to similar material, then subscribe, or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.